Imagine building a coil of ribbon the size of a basketball inside your own abdomen. Then, if you happen to get eaten by a large predator, the acid inside their digestive system would cause it to suddenly pop out like a paper yo-yo to form a hollow tube 40 feet long. At the ends of this tube are sharp points that would mix your guts up with those of the predator, poisoning it. As crazy as this sounds, this is a real structure made by some bacteria, and it's called an R-body. The story of their discovery is fascinating and a little convoluted. In 1938, Tracy Sonneborn was studying paramecia, beautiful single-celled eukaryotes. He discovered that some strains of paramecium are lethal to other strains. They cause their victims to become paralyzed, or make a hump appear on their back, or spin in circles before dying. He called these lethal strains killer paramecium. But Sonneborn found something amazing about this killing ability. He discovered that it could be transmitted between paramecium by mating, but in a very unusual way. He found that the killer trait was being transmitted not with material from the nucleus, but through the cytoplasm. Later, scientists found that the trait depended on bacteria that live inside the paramecium. These bacteria are passed between paramecia during mating, and they are also shed into the environment where a sensitive strain might eat them. A single one is enough to kill a sensitive paramecium. When scientists inspected these bacteria closely, they found that they contained a spot that would refract light in the microscope, a refractile body, or an R body. This R body could extend into a long filament when liberated from the bacteria. With the advent of electron microscopy, scientists learned that the R body is actually a long coiled ribbon that can transition into a 20 micron long hollow needle at low pH and they could actually see this ribbon puncturing the food vacuole of the paramecium. But our bodies themselves are harmless. A paramecium can eat lots of purified our bodies without any ill effects. Therefore, our bodies only function as a delivery mechanism for some as yet unknown toxin. I think it's amazing how these bacteria have solved a huge challenge that we as human researchers face today, getting material from outside the cell, inside the cell. Much like a hungry paramecium, many of our own cells take up and digest material from the environment in a compartment called the endosome. The endosome would make a convenient path to get DNA, RNA, or other therapeutic molecules inside the cell, except that the endosome is designed to destroy foreign material with a combination of acid and digestive enzymes. But maybe we can use our bodies as microscopic needles to deliver molecules across the membrane of the endosome. When the endosome becomes acidic, our bodies might extend to puncture it and mix its contents with that of the rest of the cell. In order to think about using our bodies as this kind of tool, we need to really understand how they work. We would also want to engineer them to respond to different levels of acidity, and we would want to check to make sure they can actually break membranes outside their natural context. That's where our work comes in. By developing a simple way to measure our body extension, building a panel of mutants that extend at different pHs, and demonstrating that our bodies can actually rupture membranes in the lab, we're taking our first steps toward domesticating this incredible natural machine.